What makes a battle? This is what it takes to make a battle. These are American supplies out of the factories, foundries, mines, harvested from the soil, pouring in from all sections, all states, from the east, from the south, from the midwest and the west. Supplies, equipment, weapons, made with one purpose and one purpose only. These are the factors of war, the backbone of battle. Take them away, destroy them, diminish them in number or quality, fail to replace them in time, and first the soldier and then the nation faces defeat, destruction, and death. Without them, no battle is possible. You, the millions of workers, men and women, young and old, high school kids and grandmothers, Democrats and Republicans, Protestants, Catholics and Jews, white and colored, you who make them know their purpose. Give them to our fighting men and you give them the overwhelming power of the world's greatest industrial democracy. The power we are now using to rid the world of the Nazis. The power that will break the empire that produced the Jap executioners and murderers. Here, we are combat loading our transports. American sea power, probably the greatest naval force ever assembled, heads for our first land penetration of Japanese territory, the Marshall Islands, center gate in Jap Fortress Pacific. Timed with new blows at northern Paramashiru and southern Rabaul, the invasion of the 32 Marshall Atoll stands as a masterpiece of amphibious strategy. For 75 days, our land and sea-based bombers blasted the outer islands. This was the first battle mission for many of these aircraft carriers. But our later tactics depended on it, depended on their softening blows. This was the first round in a finished fight. Remember the look of those Jap hangars, you'll see them again later. The Japs sent up planes trying to drive us off, but the attempt ended in spectacular suicide like this. led the Japs to expect our attack on the fringe of the marshals. But our blow was struck at the very center, the Kwajalein Atoll. We struck at both ends of the 70-mile atoll simultaneously. While the 7th Infantry headed for the main island of Kwajalein in the south, here in the north, the 4th Marines prepared to invade Roy and Namur. The battle wagons blasted Roy and Namur with 5,000 tons of anger twice as much as Berlin was getting at just about the same time. The men climbed down to the assault craft and wait for the signal for H hour. There it is.
communication post, coordinating the battles on land, sea, and air. They started straight in, covering their advance with mortar fire. On a half mile wide coral island, there's no room for complicated tactics and flanking movements. There's just infighting, shell hole hopping across flat, empty sand with no cover. Each man fights his own war against the Japs, hidden out there somewhere in the rubble. From the start, the jig was obviously up for the Japs on Roy. Germans would have quit right away, but Japs are Japs. They crept behind wreckage and took pot shots. They dug into the ground like rats. It was a matter of finding out where they were hiding and blowing them apart with bangalores and grenades. There they go. To their Jap ancestors. The complete job on Roy took five and one half hours. The stuff you see here and the stuff you're going to see was brand new, secretly assembled in depots for this particular battle. It was new because the older stuff gets used up, burnt up, or worn out. Because the faster we move, the more stuff we need. Each success leads to another and larger battle which cannot be won, cannot even be launched, until the mountains of equipment earmarked for it are actually at dockside. While the Marines were organizing their supply dumps here at Roy and Namur, the 7th Infantry were riding in for the kill 50 miles south at Kwajalein. Kwajalein was a bigger island than Roy and Namur, more powerfully defended. It was harder for our planes and naval guns to level it completely, easier for the Japs to hang on. Before the direct assault, our tactics were to flank Kwajalein. We landed artillery on the two small islands on either side and blasted at close range. We brought artillery shells ashore. It took only a few moments of firing to empty these shell cases. In 60 seconds after the barrage was lifted, the infantry hit the beach at Kwajalein. Jap pillbox. Sometimes they'd go crazy, try making a break for nowhere, like that. business, smoking and burning and blasting them out dead or alive, only it was tougher. Out of 10,000 Japs, only 264 surrendered. When they did, they came out dazed and shaking. This Jap made signs indicating that there were 10 other Imperial Marines still living in that pillbox. You can't blame them much for not believing what the loudspeaker was telling them, that we treat them fairly under the rules of the Geneva Convention. The guy was nuts enough to believe that Japan was going to dictate peace in the White House. You would hardly expect him to believe the truth when he heard it, or even when he saw it, as we fixed up the wounded. These sullen human beings were in terror that they'd receive the same fate they had given our boys at Patan. Instead, we gave them cigarettes, food, and water. Soft, huh? The record shows who's soft. We just happen to be civilized. 
That's the difference. We told you to remember those hangers. This is what it took to make a battle. Burn twisted, broken equipment. Stuff made for battle and destroyed in battle. You've got to be able to lose it. Lose it all. Make it all again. Keep on making it, no matter what. For that last battle. That final battle. Jap pillboxes, five feet of concrete. It took 16 inches of American firepower to let the air in. Anti-aircraft guns, gun mounts, shore guns. Radio tower that flashed a last message to Tokyo that came too late. And this also is what it took to make a battle. these men will be forgotten. This American will not go to his grave on Kwajalein unidentified. He'll be remembered too. The brave Marines and soldiers who fell here have comrades who will never forget, nor let the murderers in Tokyo forget. Yes, there'll be more battles, harder and fiercer battles until all these honored dead are revenged with a terrible justice. And from home, from the millions who make the stuff of battles, must come the power for this justice. Back the attack. Buy more than before. 